Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Nathan Fox, that's Ben Olson. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from Anonymous and we've got a summary at the top. Eric says, uh, skipping some background, Anonymous has a 3.4 GPA as a first gen college student, graduated in 22, took a gap year to regather myself and figure out my career goals. And then Ben, you can read this argument or this uh, email from sure. Anonymous. Yeah, this past year was supposed to be filled with intense LSAT study and, and improving my freezing cold diagnostic of 144. I was inconsistent with studying and procrastinated throughout my gap year. I procrastinated because of not having the confidence to achieve my LSAT goals. Throughout my time in school growing up, I was always told that I was not a quote, good test taker. It took a lot of the it took a lot of LSAT demon content and self awareness to realize that is not true. Oh man, you know a cold diagnostic of 144 is actually a great place to start. We would never have told you that you're not a good test taker. We would have told you 144 kicks ass and you should be able to make it into the 160s at least from there. And uh, yeah, go to town. Yeah. Anonymous continues, I know whomever is answering this question is going to dislike reading this part, but I have a registration for the October LSAT. It has been pushed back a few times. I feel like I just need to take the test, get a solid score, and apply to the law school that my sights are set on to see what happens. A 3.5 and a 165 would write my ticket there. Am I cutting myself short when I get when I can get an acceptance and money with those stats. <laughs> I'm not pissed, but it sounds like, you know, better, you know, is it like if anonymous, it sounds like they know that they're not doing the right thing, but I, I guess we could keep going. Eric, uh, provides a little bit more of a yeah. summary of this long email. Uh, Eric says anonymous also considers their T 50 state school, but doesn't want to be bound to their state for their whole career. Anonymous is open to taking another year off, but their family is accusing them of wasting away their 20s. Oof. You want to keep reading? Yeah, I have to remind myself constantly that people who know nothing about the process should not give input about my decisions. At the end of the day, it's my money, my debt, my life. No one else is right. Thanks for guiding me through this in an intense process. LSAT Demon has been changing the lives of many people. The whole Demon team should feel very proud. Kindest regards, exclamation point. Well, thank you, Anonymous. Yeah, it sounds like you want this, but at the same time, you want something more for yourself. Yeah, and your family just wants to be able to brag that their kid's in law school. Your family, they're well-meaning. They want what's best for you, but they don't know what's best for you. They think they know what's best for you, but they probably don't know shit about the law school admissions game. They don't well, know how much it costs. They don't know about the scholarships. They don't know how important the LSAT is. They don't know how much you can improve your LSAT. Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> I was just thinking about family members. I mean, I, I'm dealing with kids going to college and there's all sorts of opinions from grandparents to uncles to uh, the friends of other parents, right? And they're not going to be the ones paying the bill. That's why it's, it's so weird to me when I hear some distant family member saying like, oh, just take out loans. Just, just take out the loans and go to that school. Isn't that exciting? It's like, yo, are you going to be paying that loan back? Right. Like, what? <laughs> who, what? Who, and if they why are, are they opining on this issue? Like, <laughs> If they are, we can have an entirely different discussion. But if yeah. they're not going to be paying for it, then yeah, I don't think they should get to decide. Nope. Pretty but simple. They sure like to share their opinion. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, yeah. I mean, that's a tangent, but everybody's got an opinion. We have an opinion, but yeah, that's where we fall, or at least that's what I'm thinking. Anonymous, I think that you should apply early in the cycle, taking the October LSAT and then applying this cycle. That's not early. That's you're applying in the middle of the cycle if you do that, which hurts your admissions chances. It also hurts your scholarship chances. It sounds like you know that you're not your LSAT scores are not yet ready. They're not where you want them to be. 
And, you know, you're signed up now for an LSAT that you think you're not really ready for. If you think you're not really ready for it, then you're probably not really ready for it. So you're going to get some mediocre score, most likely. And then if you force yourself to apply this cycle, you sounds like you're going to get some mediocre offer. When you say that a 3.5 and a 165 would write your ticket at this school, does that mean that you'll get a full ride at that school? Or does yeah. it mean that you'll get some money at that school? Because getting yeah. some money is not writing your ticket. Getting a full ride is writing your ticket. And even better, having multiple full ride offers to choose from, that's really writing your ticket. I hope, you know, your folks can wrap their minds around the idea that some people graduate from law school with a quarter of a million dollars of debt. Other people graduate with zero debt. Surely they know what a quarter of a million dollars is worth. And if you wait another year here to bump your LSAT by another five or 10 points and apply more broadly, you really could be, you know, right. Calling your own shots. If, if you just slow down a little bit. Yeah. They're, I'm sorry. I mean, their pressure is not helping you here. Their pressure, they're, they're they're essentially pressuring you into something that could be the worst financial decision you've ever made. You know, I even want to talk about parents who are willing to pay. Okay. So let's assume that I'm a student and we have a parent who's saying, Hey, I want you to go to school. I want you to go now. I understand it's going to cost you money because you're not going to get the scholarships that you're hoping to get by getting a higher LSAT score or whatever. Like they're actually that aware. Right. But I want you to go now. So I'll, I'll foot the bill as a student who, or a, you know, a child who's getting that money, I would also, I'd push back and say, okay, well, I appreciate that very much as a steward of your funds. Yeah. I'm going to strongly recommend that you don't do that, <laughs> that you hold that money or just give it to me. And, and then I will, <laughs> I will take that quarter of a million dollars and I will make the most of it by paying for some of my living expenses, but then also delaying for a year so I can get a scholarship and use the rest of the money for a down payment on a house. I mean, that money could be used so much more effectively. That's all. Yeah, right. Like if they have the cash. Yeah. Oh, great. Give it to, put it in a trust. Yep. Like I'll, I, I, I will, I absolutely. Thank you so much. I would love to spend this money for the betterment of our family prospects. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the best way to do that is to just immediately hand it over to the law schools because <laughs> those same law schools might let you go for free if you just had five more, 10 more LSAT points. Yeah. All right. Is that enough for anonymous? Yeah. Thanks for writing in. Email daily at LSATdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.